Valley fever, well, it's uncommon nationally, but did you know that two thirds of all U.S. Valley fever infections occur right here in Arizona? I want you to meet Joan Kerber Walker. She is president and CEO of AZ Bio with the details on what's being done to treat it and diagnose it, which can be hard sometimes. First of all, thank you for being here on Sonoran Living. It's great to be here. Thank you, Terry. Well, especially with this kind of information, it's very important. First of all, explain what is valley fever exactly and who does it affect? So valley fever is a lung disease. It can affect other parts of the body, but the lungs are most common. It's caused by a fungus in the dirt called mm. coccidiotes, oh. or coxy for short, because okay. that's a mouthful. Yeah. And so that fungus, when the air picks up the dust in the dirt, it carries the fungus. We breathe it in and that causes the infection. And this is an infection that impacts people, livestock and our pets. Yes, I have two dogs who've had valley fever for quite some time oh, now. Sorry. So let's talk about uh, the Valley Fever Center of Excellence at the U of A and what they're working on. I I'm, I'm assuming this is gonna be all real good news for us here in Arizona. So because this is ground zero right. for valley fever, the Valley Fever Center of Excellence at the University of Arizona is working on tests so that we can detect it on treatment so we can treat it better. There hasn't been a new medicine for valley fever in 35 years. That's crazy. And best of all, they're working on a vaccine. So hopefully our pets and our people mm -hmm. don't get sick. Now, is it is it because we have such a high rate of valley fever here in Arizona, is it because of the dirt? Like, is it the type of dirt that we have here in Arizona? I mean, why are we getting it so much? So it just happens that our environment is friendly mm. to this fungus that's not friendly to us. Mm. Mm. And so we find it most commonly in Arizona, Central California, and Northwestern Mexico. Oh, okay, all right. So I know that there's a new project being funded by the Arizona Board of Regents that you're working on. Tell us about that. So this is a great use of our TRIF dollars. And we've talked on the show about how the TRIF funds from our sales taxes fund research and innovation. And so all three universities are working together and they are mapping out the soil across the state of Arizona to figure out where Cog Cities is hiding. And then they can figure out how to treat it so less of us get sick. And our pets. And our all pets. of us, right? That is, that is a good sign. Boy, I hope they figure it out because it can be a huge, huge problem. So let's talk about uh, the fact that here in Arizona, we, it doesn't help because of the winds we've had, the pollen, the, the are, are people more who have bad allergies more susceptible, do you think? You know, there is not scientific basis to yeah. say that that is the case. What we do know is people that are immune compromised uh. are more likely to get sick. Most of us are gonna be exposed to this fungus at some time, and our body is gonna clear it. Okay. But for some of us, because we're immune compromised mm -hmm. or we have a, another health condition that makes our system unable to clear it, yeah. that's when it can be a short-term illness or a long-term illness. Uh. And that's what we want to prevent. Yeah, absolutely. Well, keep up the good work, Joan. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, I want to give our viewers some more information. If you want to learn more about Arizona Health Innovations, just visit their website. It's azbio, azbio.org slash AZ advances.